All right, compass construction number three. This is probably the hardest one, partly because it has the most steps. This one's gonna have six steps, okay? All the other ones basically had you know, four steps, all right? So, longest one, usually the hardest one, all right? But let's take a look at it. You should still be able to do it correctly. All right, we are gonna copy an angle. That means I'm gonna create another angle that looks just like this one. So that means you need to get an angle on your paper. Use your straight edge, get an angle on your paper, okay? And then we're gonna start with step one. So here we go with step one. Draw another ray that will be one side of the new angle, okay? It doesn't have, just because this one's nice and flat, this one doesn't have to be nice and flat, right? Um, it can you know, be tilted a little bit or whatever. It doesn't have to be the same length, it can be a little bit longer. Uh, it could be a little bit shorter, but if you make it too much shorter, you might run into a problem. Okay, so mine isn't exactly the same direction. It's actually a little bit longer. That's fine. So there's step one. All right, step two. From the original, that's this one up here, the original angle's vertex. Remember, vertex is that point right there. Draw an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. Don't make this arc real small. You don't have to make it super big, but don't make it really small. If you make it really small, this can be a little bit difficult. So put my pivot point right there on the vertex, and I'm gonna draw an arc that touches both sides of this angle. Okay? Once again, sometimes it's a little hard to see that. Hopefully uh, it shows up. I'll zoom in just one more time there. You can see it pretty good. Okay? And so that's what that looks like. All right, let's go to step three. Copy that arc onto the new ray from its starting point. Remember, this ray has a starting point right here. I have not changed my compass yet. You don't want to change that. If you changed it, you're already running into a problem. It's got to be the same distance. So I didn't change it. So from this ray's starting point, I hope if I put my pivot point on the end, that's what happens when you do these things at crazy times in the morning. All right, but I'm going to draw this arc and I need to kind of fill in this open space here as well with it. So I need to make it nice and long, okay? So you can kind of see, like this one is nice and long up here. I want that one nice and long. It might even be longer just to, to make sure I've got enough distance, okay? All right, step four. Use your compass to measure the distance between the points of intersection on the original angle. Let's look at that again. Use your compass to measure the distance between the points of intersection on the original angle. So let's go back to that original angle. And you see these two points of intersection? Okay, that's what we wanna do. We wanna measure this distance. Now it's probably not gonna be exactly the same as what I have right now, unless you drew a 60 degree angle, in which case it will be. Why? Eh, we might discuss that later. Actually, we will, all right? But you're probably gonna have to change it a little bit. So there, I got it right there. All right, I gotta crank mine down a little bit, a little bit smaller. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, I've got them on my two points of intersection. Okay, so I wanna keep that distance the same now. So I measured that distance from this point of intersection right here over to that point of intersection right there. I measured that distance using my compass. All right, so let's see what our next step says. Step five, from the new angle's point of intersection. Okay, remember, this is gonna be my new angle. Here's that point of intersection that I just created. Okay, so from the new angle's point of intersection, draw an arc using that distance, the distance you found up here in step four. Okay, so I haven't changed this at all. Here's my new angle. I have this point of intersection right here. I'm gonna put my pivot point right there, and I'm gonna draw an arc and they need to intersect, right up there. You can see that intersection. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot where that intersection is. Be a little bit easier to see it. All right, lastly, step six. From that new ray's starting point, remember this is the new ray, there's its starting point. From the new ray's starting point, draw a second ray that goes through the point of intersection. Which point of intersection, that one you just created. Okay, so take my straight edge Align that up right there with that original, sorry, the new rays starting point and that point of intersection I just created. And I'm gonna draw that. Make sure, remember, angles are made up of rays. So I'm gonna get that ray on the end of it.
Okay, now, let me zoom out just a little bit so you can kind of see both angles at the same time. Okay, they're not pointing in the same direction, but they don't have to. But they should be congruent. If I were to measure them, they should have the same degrees. So, let's get some letters here. Um, how about P, Q, R. Okay, P, Q, R. Down here we'll do M, N, O. If I copied that correctly, I should be able to say that angle Q is congruent to angle N. Now, why am I allowed to use just one letter here, if you remember that? If I say angle Q, it's not confusing. I know exactly which angle it is. If you want to say angle PQR or angle RQP, that's fine. Same thing. If I say angle N, I know exactly which angle it is. But if you want to say angle MNO, that's fine. Or if you want to say angle ONM, that's fine. But these two angles that I created, that was the original one and the one I created after it, they need to be congruent to each other. If they aren't, you did something wrong. All right? So there you go. That's kind of the longest, probably toughest compass construction. We're going to do this one one more time during the year um, for sure. And then maybe we'll come back and explain really why this works. But we have a lot of work to do before we get to that. That involves congruent triangles and some other things like that. Okay? Um, got one more to do. We're going to end up bisecting an angle for our fourth one. And then you guys will be done with these compass constructions.